Hey folks, great to see you out there. You know, I've been watching the trend on three-dimensional looking quilts and I created this project using my new template set we call the Super 60. This is a very simple project and I'm gonna teach you all the steps. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody. My name is Rob Appel. I am your host here at So Well from Stitch in Heaven on YouTube and I'm super blessed to see everybody on the other side of the camera. If you have not yet subscribed, please make sure you do so today. Throw us a like, make sure you comment on the video. It really helps the channel grow and that way we can continue to uh, feed our family of quilters out there with another awesome project. Now this is one I designed myself. It is called Dupree's Diamond. Now if you've been following along, we are using again my Super 60 template set and you probably should pick this up if you want to do this, but you don't absolutely have to. You could make some templates on your own or make these shapes pretty simple yourself or also you could use an eight and a half inch 60 degree triangle template also but I'm gonna walk you through the cutting and all of that but I just wanted to point out one of the templates that we're using today or two of the templates we're using today are in the super 60 set so that's really cool and I've been getting a lot of requests to engineer or design some quilts that are kind of, you know, from Rob's crazy brain. So when you look at this really close, there are some really fun color changes. If you like, notice the stars. So I wanted to give you perspective. I wanted to give you shadowing by using basically three shades of two colors plus the white, right? So we're gonna talk about our warm colors, the yellow, orange, and red. And we'll talk about our cool colors, the shades of blue that we have today as we're going through the information. But that's what's really going on. So don't just dive right in. There are some twists along the way that you're gonna need this video for. So let's go ahead and grab the pattern. If you don't already have it, you can pick it up here at Stitch in Heaven. There's a link in the description below. And as we look right into our supply list, I've basically broken it down. Fabrics up here, here and this is your cutting uh, recipes right here. And these are the number of strips that you need because we're gonna actually do all of this as strip sets, folks, or basically just big chunks. So the big chunks will be cut out of these eight and a half inch strips needed. And I wanna point out here that um, you need eight strips of the white and then from each strip we'll get seven pieces. And boy, that's a lot of triangles is what I'm trying to say. It's not only eight triangles, it's eight strips that you'll need. So um, you'll use that cutting chart. I'm gonna set the top of this aside here. And then the next thing I wanna point out is of the Super 60 set, we are really using the Bobby template primarily. This is Bobby and it makes this shape and you can also see it throughout the stars. This particular shape here is literally just a 60 degree triangle, but we can use our Jerry template if you already have it. We just won't be cutting out the fill piece or the semicircle out of there. Okay, so we'll get into sizes here in a moment on that, but I just wanted to point out that's what the big red square means, is you don't necessarily need to cut any of the jerry or the fill shapes for this. And we are starting by making strip set, folks. And um, so I've got the different color orientations, the different colors laid out, as I've said here, and I wanna point out that all of our strip sets start at four and a half inches, and I got a little carried away, and I stitched them together already today, so please, forgive me and also you'll have to forgive me if I'm starting to get a little shiny. I am out in Texas and it's quite warm in the studio so do forgive me but I was too excited to wait even for the air conditioner. So let's get moving back into these strip sets. Now once you've put your strip sets together, again both strips are four and a half inches by the width of the fabric and I'll tell you again in the instructions how many groupings of each you need to make. There's a key to this, folks, because you actually get seven of your full triangle shapes, uh, the 60 degree triangle shapes, out of each strip set. But in this project, we're only using half of the groupings. So actually, in the back of the pattern, I've created two other quilt designs that you can use the leftovers for. And folks, just so I don't forget, I mean, we have some serious leftovers because the opposite of everything we're using in here in the project is available to make other projects out of. But it's the easiest to make these by making strip sets as we go. So at any rate, looking down here, you can see the key to this is, is we're gonna want, when we're talking about our blue families and the whites, we're gonna want the blues and the whites 
side parts for all of them, whether it's the dark, it's the medium, or it's the light. All of these pieces are the ones we want. Therefore, the ones that have the blues and the tips, you will simply set aside. So what I was trying to point out a moment ago is if you start by making your cut, trimming off your edge and making sure that your first full piece cut from that selvage is giving you what you want with the white in the tip, you'll get four this way and three that are the ones we'll use for other projects. So make sure you are looking closely at the way the cuts are because that way you get the proper amount from the strips necessary. I guess if there was a miscut, you could always just sew a couple extra strips back together. So we are gonna need these. I'm gonna set these aside because we are talking about some of the strip cuttings and I really wanted to give you the instructions today as we follow the pattern. So that was that diagram that I was just showing you there by cutting that off and making sure that we're getting what we want. And I'm gonna show you where those pieces are gonna fall in, folks. So these right here, this is why we want the wide part because this is the little point following in here. So we're only using the triangles with the wides in the blues. And I can really say that throughout the entire project because the other places where the white is not, you've rotated for your orange or your yellow or your red. Now let's talk about color family for a second, folks, because that's the easiest way to understand this project altogether. When we're talking in color families, we're looking at light, medium, and dark from both of these sets here, right? So, Whenever you're pairing, you'll be pairing your darks together or your mediums together or your lights together. Or when we get into the special chi triangles and uh, parts for the star, we'll be swapping a light for a light from a warm family to a cool family. But the orientation will change. And so we wanna make sure we really focus and we're getting there quickly, folks. But first, let's talk about the rest of those cuts we need to make. So on the back of the pattern, I asked you for the four and a half inch strips. Those are to make the strip sets themselves. I also asked you for three and a quarter inch strips. Now those three and a quarter inch strips are perfect for cutting the actual bobby shape. Now, what I normally do, and there's a straight line, dead center on your bobby, on the fold is where I make my first cut. Now this information is also on that first page of your pattern. But here's what I want you to see today. Not only am I gonna cut straight past that template or that tip, but as I come back here, what I really wanna do is cut past on my first line. So that therefore I can cut off the tip. This one will simply be unfolded. And while we're sitting here, let's just get the iron on top of it now. Okay, but the key to this is, is now, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that same template. Probably should have chose a lighter color fabric. But as you can see, there's a little bit of tip left over there, but this edge, oops, this edge right there is running perfectly. And now as I go ahead and cut through here, I'm actually preparing the next cut. It's like playing pool, folks, or billiards. You know, you want to set up for your next shot within your first shot. So we're going to cut these out. I'm getting two at a time. You can certainly stack your strips. I usually don't cut more than six layers myself, but that is the trick to the most efficient cutting of your bobby templates. Okay. Now I also asked you all for eight and a half inch Great for crumbs and scraps. I also asked you all to cut your eight and a half inch strips. Now your eight and a half inch strips are also gonna be used for your solids. And you're gonna need two solids of your light, your medium, and your dark from your blues. So you don't actually need to cut all of this into triangles. So you can actually save some of this for cutting some of your bobby shapes as well. So what I recommend is we're now over here on the selvage side, the open side. And what I'm gonna really do is I'm just gonna lay this triangle template right here. I'm gonna make my first cut. And of course I should be using my <laughs> Martelli mat that's right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut down this way. Now remember the key is just trim these tips off here and here, but then obviously don't cut that out, right? Because we just want the full triangles. And you'll do that for, like I said, the light, the medium, and the dark, but also for all of the outside white edges, as well as the half shapes that fill in 
in all of your top pieces. So they're all can be easily cut from your Jerry template and also by using that straight line to cut these in half. I use my straight line in the center of my template. I will need to eyeball where the center ends up and then I could go ahead and just rotary cut through there and that would divide those in half. And when you're using solid fabrics, they become universal that way. This is actually called Shadow Blush from Benertex. And with the Shadow Blush, actually it isn't an actual solid. It's a print with some tone to it. So you'll wanna make sure you're paying attention to the orientation uh, if you're utilizing something other than a solid, solid fabric for those half pieces. Okay, so I think we've covered all of the information as it goes through that way. Now let's talk about sewing some of these units together. And this was one of the big concerns I was having. I wanna make sure that you all understand. So in the pattern pieces, again, I give you the amount of necessary units and also the amount of necessary cuts. This is what I want you to pay attention to, folks. Notice within my triangles here, and I had some of them. What on earth did I do with them? Here they are. Within my triangles, there's my dark. Some of them are gonna be light on the right, and some of them are gonna be light on the left. And that's what allows for this really fun color exchange through the stars, because look, this one's more of a dark and medium in the center, and this one's a light and medium in the center. And that's what makes the quilt, I think, so unique looking, is it's hard to track at first. It, you think you see it, and then you start to break down the colors, and you're like, oh, what is he doing to me there? I think you like that kind of stuff. But so at any rate, you will need to pay attention. And that information again is broken down right here. So the right on the light side is 20, right light on the left side is 10 of those, but just make sure you're paying attention. Okay, and then let me show you how we stitch these together because if you're afraid of Y-seam folks, this is the easiest Y-seam you're ever gonna do. You're really just not gonna do it. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna grab one of my lights here and a medium here. And let's just start by sewing these together. We're gonna to put our right sides together and we're just joining on the short side. So on the short side here, I like to match them up all the way up here at the tip. So if they fall apart when you grab them, just match them up at the tip and you're using a quarter inch seam allowance. I happen to have an edge guide on my machine today. Makes it all the easier. And I'm just gonna stitch and let that machine feed that fabric through. I wanna make sure I line that up a little better. Coming on through. And did you see that, folks? I stitched all the way off the end, sewed all the way through. Now, I'm not gonna back stitch there, but I will use my thread cutter. Okay, and then when I come over to the ironing board, now what I'm gonna do, and this is key to the way that I do these, I always press my seam over to the left side. So it doesn't matter where the light fabric is, it only matters where I want my seam because we're the way we're gonna do the next approach. So as I come on over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just press that over. And then when I come back on into my space here, now all we're really gonna do, folks, is we're just gonna line up right sides together, the dark onto that first piece. Lining that up all the way around there, whoop, lining that up as I said. And now we're gonna do that same quarter inch seam allowance. Right here, dropping the presser foot. And I'm gonna just go ahead, and this is a couple of their fun ways to do this. Now one, I've got my finger right on the union. I've got my finger right in the seam that is that seam right there and I can feel it. I know some folks will actually finger press this to mark where that union's gonna be so that when they come in, they can drop that needle right there on it and then just leave your needle down, lift your presser foot up and rotate your fabrics. And here's the key. First, swing this top fabric around. It's like three steps. Second, pull this back fold out of the way and then before you drop your presser foot, grab your stiletto and if that's not handy, grab your seam ripper and dig out that fold that you might have accidentally created and you would thought that I actually prepared for that big of a mess in today's video, but I really hadn't. But you can see it's actually laying flat right there. You may even wanna hold that seam ripper or stiletto or whatnot. And then once I've made that corner and I dropped a few stitches, I'm gonna come down to this bottom end, double check to make sure it's still all lined up. And now we're just gonna go ahead and stitch 
right through. So you notice we actually didn't do a Y seam. We just did a really aggressive straight seam where we took control of our fabric and did what we needed to do. Whoops, hit the wrong button. That's because I was bragging. Happens all the time. <laughs> okay, foot's up now. Now with this last piece, because it was the, the, the final, I find that it's usually easiest to press both seams over into the last fabric you put on. So again, it has nothing to do with color orientation, only has to do with positioning and placement and all of that. So that's gonna go ahead and lay over and make another nice seam. Let me show you that all a little bit closer. So that was that seam there that went together. Now, what I was starting to say about our super special triangles here is the yellow, orange, and red that perimeters our center are stitched into the triangle pieces. So each of the stars are made from six units, right? One, two, three, and then three more. So therefore, what you end up doing for each star grouping is you make five that are identical. So these two here would be identical because they have the light on the right. Then as I went around and made the rest of these, I would sub out that light on the right for like my yellow and then I would have a medium and then I would have a dark so that this triangle is constructed the same and what I've done is I swapped light blue for light warm. <laughs> I know, I just never can make it unconfusing, can I? But that's what I'm trying to teach in here. Although, remember, we don't always have the light on the right. And so that's why you have to pay attention to which of the stars you're building so that you know which of the yellows and oranges to place where you place. And don't even check Trust this actual diagram, trust what's on the pages of the pattern. And I'll hold it still in case you want to see from home without, you know what I'm saying, right? And then like I was laughing about originally, but the last of the instructions are kind of the first thing I stitched or showed you stitched you was to make those solid, those big pieces um, that I've somehow misplaced already. These big pieces here. So that's what the last little bit of the instructions talk about for cutting and building. Now, whenever you're making a triangle based quilt though, you can't sew the units together first. You can't just get two of your favorites and stitch them together because if you do, you're gonna end up in this weird situation because they're really built in rows, folks. So things being built in rows. So what I want you to do is the back page of your diagram here, you can see now that I've gone ahead and numbered and the numbers you see on the pattern page are the numbers of the color that was used. So on these bottoms where you see, or the top where you see half seven, that means I used half of a solid color number seven, because those are those half shapes I was discussing earlier that fill in along your top or your bottom rows. You can build the diagram very easily and to make it so that it wasn't so confusing in the stars, I labeled one set reminding there are duplicates of all of the stars that are made. So I'll show you again, one and two, one and two, one and two. They match each other, but they don't necessarily match the other stars in the way that the color orientation goes. Now, let's just take another moment and play because we haven't really looked at these wonderful fabrics. Let's just put those on the ground because that's what started to happen. <laughs> the wonderful fabrics that were made with the dark, or I should say with the warms and the cools. So to end up getting kind of that tumbling blocks effect, right? We are end up utilizing two of each. One, two, where'd we go? One, two. And so in the quilt, I'm always positioning lights on the top, mediums on the right hand side, and the darks on the left hand side. So that's why this has medium and medium here and dark and dark here right? There's my light and my light. There's my light and my light, my light and my light. So it's actually quite easy to stay organized because like some tumbling blocks, you're playing with color all the way through. It's the same colors and the same combos as you work through the entire layout. So let's say we're going to go ahead and sew some of our triangles together. Let me just grab a solid so you can really see what's happening here. Okay. So you're sewing them together in 
rows. So this would be a row and a row like this. Okay, so when I'm doing these rows, it's real easy because I'm just going to go ahead and match my tip and my union and my next tip and with a quarter inch. But the key is, is not to fight with the machine. Just let your machine do what it wants. Let that feed go through. And I've kind of got my finger right here on this seam. Sometimes you're going to want to split apart or catch maybe on that presser foot. So you might want to lift your presser foot as it comes underneath and then drop it, clearing any extra bulk from your seam there. So this is a real easy one because you had that one point to match and it sews right out through that corner and then you cut your threads. You may also find that you want to use a clapper and press your seams open because of the bulk that's involved. Certainly nothing wrong with that. I don't have my clapper handy, so I'm probably just talking in circles here because this is a challenge. Of course, you could have pressed them to one side as well. Okay, so that's where we were just working. And then like, let's say we're bringing on a solid. You've trimmed the tips so any of the directions can work. Um, and that's why we have these tips chopped. So you're going to line up that chop tip. And this one didn't get chopped, but you can see where it would be. And again, the key is, is just don't let the machine go tearing away from you. And remember, you're kind of starting off that corner. So you might want to use a single hole stitch plate. Something that doesn't allow the corners to get pulled in. I should say the corners of your fabric to get pulled in so much. And then sewing again right off of that edge. Cut your threads. And again, you could press to one side or you could uh, use your clapper. This time I'll just press to one side because it's pretty quick and easy like this. I just wanted to show you the assembly technique. And really what you're looking for is just making sure your fabrics maintain a pretty nice and clean straight row. Don't trim them if they get a little wonky because there's so much bias, folks. We're going to be able to massage our rows back together. And then, of course, we know any small nuances that we don't care for will simply quilt out. That's what they always say anyways. Let's talk about the machine quilting, folks, and I'll let you get busy in your own sewing room today. Did this one on the long arm. Hopefully you're watching Free Motion. Fridays, a uh, live series I like doing. I started with big swirls up in the white, but like with a lot of my projects, I wanted to not distract from the geometry or the positioning of the patchwork. So it's really just straight lines, but the straight lines go in the direction that the color is moving. So I kind of have my lights or my blues heading this direction, my mediums and my darks, because this is an obvious top to this quilt for me. I did straight line quilting, pretty wide in the blues, medium distance apart in there, real tight in the center pieces and then medium open. This is where I had some fun. I don't know if you can tell, but there's some real tight swirls in here, but I did again change colors of thread. I used seven colors of thread, three blues, three reds, yellow orange, three warms we'll call them again, and the white all white bobbin thread on the back. And I'll tell you, it certainly turned out looking all white when I was done. All right, all white, it was bad. Sorry, bad dad joke. But anyway, I really love the quilting on this because it allows our eyes to see the dimension and the perspective within it. And it was really simple, folks, because I just had two strategies to keep track of swirls and straight lines and just make sure the straight lines were running in the appropriate direction, so. At any rate, I feel like I've said everything maybe even twice. I hope you have learned a bit and you can simply follow the pattern to make this wonderful Dubris diamond quilt. I do believe Stitch in Heaven has kits coming if they're not already ready for you. So those will be in the descriptions below. Also, if you'd like to get a kit, I think this would be a terrific quilt also made with a black background and um, it's just some, like an I think it'd be fabulous in black and blues and greens or greens and purple. I just love playing with these high graphic intensity quilts. So, you know, I'd love to know in the comments below from all of you, uh, what color theme will you do your Dupree's diamond quilt in? And until next time, everybody, when we have another fantastic tutorial for you or a free motion Friday, please stay well. Oh, wait, 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 I just forgot one thing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even plan for that, but I forgot to show you guys, like I said, with those extra pieces and parts that are left over, I have a couple of other designs. Now, keep in mind, 
I used all of the parts to make that one, and then that one, and then that one. And there's just some slight changes in these. So you can't make all three, but you can certainly make one of these alternate designs with what you have left over. And so at any rate, I told you I would tell you all about those, and then I almost forgot. So once again, folks, thanks again for being here. Very blessed. Please, stay well. And this time I mean it. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.